very welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's official YouTube channel. Um, before we go any further, I suppose I have to mention how uh, this week we were delighted to find out that the Camogie Report podcast uh, has won the 2021 Camogie Association uh, Media Award for Best Media Innovation. Um, we were pure delighted to find that out uh, and thanks very much to Camogie Association for awarding us that. Um, just have to thank all the people, I suppose, behind the scenes that put so much work into the podcast. Uh, in particular, Kevin Hanley does all the editing and puts hours of work putting all the clips together, different videos, in, different interviews and, and pictures and corrects all the mistakes that I make, which is quite a lot. And then Eleanor Maloney as well, behind the scenes, doing all the recording. Um, she's up the YouTube channel, so does a lot of work with uploading and downloading podcasts, setting up thumbnails. Um, doing the graphics so loads of work goes in behind the scenes and um, just to thank everyone involved everyone that's come on as guests last year um, anyone that I ever asked to come on as guests in fairness they always said yeah and they were all very good we had loads of great contributors um, last season and already this year as well and then just finally thank everyone that listens in um, with a good steady following of viewers and uh, without any, without people listening and watching on YouTube and listening on Spotify, obviously we could have never won that award. So just to thank everyone um, very much. So there. Um, right, we'll get back down uh, to earth now. And I'm delighted to, uh, to welcome Kat Devan and Olivia Hogan, our two guests here this evening. Uh, Kat is a teacher in the Presentation Secondary School in Turles and Olivia in the Ursuline Secondary School in Turles. Both All Ireland champions uh, just last week, and I'm delighted to get the two women on to talk about it. Um, Kosh, we'll start off with you. I suppose your game was first St. Patrick's Day presentation, uh, won the Junior B All Ireland final. So, Junior is under 16 and a half. Fantastic to win it. Um, I don't know about you, I felt like it was a long build up to this final. It feels like ages ago that you won the Munster final and even the All Ireland semi, and I know matches were delayed and pitches were pulled, but. Did you find it hard to keep the girls sort of uh, focused and training or how did how did that work? Yeah, I suppose it was a bit of a long um a long run in the final. Um the match got got put off, I think, on two different occasions. And um and we went with uh, we were anxious, I suppose, that that it would be on a day that would say parents could come to support um their daughters or whatever. So so we went with the Paddy's Day. But um it's funny, our, our group that we have at the minute are involved in so much. A lot of them are dual players. They play um, on Tipperary Camogie teams, football teams. Um, they're playing soccer, basketball, football in the school as well as Camogie. So one thing we didn't have to worry about was was trying to keep them going because they had matches nearly every week as it was. We got to put through all the different sports. Um, but yeah, I suppose it was a worry for us that there was such a long gap between the semi and the final. Um, and with them uh, competing in so many different sports that someone might pick up an injury or that kind of a thing. But um, look, thankfully, it all worked out um, and we ran out winners uh, in the end. So, so, um, so yeah, no, we, we were delighted and, and it was a great day for the school. And just um, on the semi-final, you had a good win in your semi-final, but I was looking up like St. Bridges Callan's semi-final result. They won like 8.15 to a point. Um, I don't know. I was kind of nervous when I saw that result. Did you know much about Callan or... When you saw that result, were you kind of weary that they must be very strong or? Yeah, definitely. I suppose we had um, as much homework as we could have done on them. Um, Keen Tracy and myself, um, Keen would be good in, in terms of getting on to, to different people around the country to figure out about, um, about different players and different teams. And we were well aware of their athleticism and I suppose physicality around the middle of the field and, and their centre forward as well. Um, so look, it, it was something that we were wary of. It, it was obvious that they had a, a big scoring threat as well. You know, they put up a massive score in their semi-final, but it wasn't something I suppose outside of management that we spoke about with the team much. But look, largely I suppose it was just down to the girls on the day, and, and thankfully they, they pulled out a performance um, in, in a final, which is very satisfying, I suppose, as a, as a management team looking on and and as players just to to be able to put it all together on the day. Um, but uh, but look, Callan were a fantastic, um, a fantastic opposition, and and look, I suppose we, we played against the wind in the first half, um, and we went in only two points down, and we were lucky to only win two points down. We kind of rallied late in the in the first half, and and if we didn't, it could have been a different, um, it could have been a different outcome. And did you choose to play against the wind, or is that just the way the toss went? Or? I'm actually not sure. I I think uh, I think Kate Ralph lost the toss. I think um, yeah. we would have gone with the wind if uh, 
yeah, I think I think we had we had told her to go with the wind if she if she had won it. So unless she went against our our uh, our advice, <laughs> yeah, I think she shot. lost it. I, yeah. I, I could thank no, Grace. Just, I must ask her ask her tomorrow in school. Do do. It's just I feel like a lot of the matches in the last few weeks, you know, seem to all be about the wind in the first half and the second half, and whether people capitalize on it. It's just interesting if uh, how it worked out. Um, Olivia, over to you then, I suppose. Um, you got you plenty of <laughs> opportunity to do homework on your opposition because this was obviously a replay. Um, a fantastic win in the final, uh, beating Loretta Kilkenny 2 8 2 5. <clears throat> so that was the junior A All Ireland final. Um, I suppose I'll have to be honest, put my hand up, you know, um, no, no lies here on this podcast, but. Well, I watched your first game and after 10 minutes, I was like, oh, here, this is game over. It wasn't about who was going to win. It was how much they were going to win by. And I'm still in shock with the comeback. It must be one of the greatest comebacks of all time. I think you're 13 points down with 10 minutes to go. Um, Unbelievable. It was absolutely fantastic. And then there and then, if it got to extra time, I felt you would have won it. Um, I was raging about extra time. And then, I'll be honest again, I I misjudged you again. I thought replay I thought you know I fancied Loretto in the replay but what a total different game it was and what a performance by the earth line and did you did you um change things up for the replay like based on what you had seen in, in obviously in the first match? Uh not hugely I suppose um I suppose like you know we haven't played Loretto too many times in the past but the the last time we played them in the senior A um you know, they definitely gave us an education in, you know, senior A and the level that they perform at. And I suppose, you know, we were under no illusion at the challenge that was ahead of us. And like the girls, in fairness, for the first match, the the comeback they made and the the scores that they got. But I suppose all through that game, that first game, like Loretta had made a really good start. And we did kind of claw back into it, but the unfortunate thing was every time we seemed to get a goal, they went down and got another goal. And so it just, it looked like we were coming back and then we got another nail hammered into us. And that was, I suppose, the way the game ebbed and flowed, but I suppose no one could really have, could have saw, you know, the the scores that we got for the last 10 minutes, as you said, 13 points down with 13 minutes to go, literally, and to come back and get a, a draw out of it. It was just... Um, hugely testament to the girls and the the courage and the heart that they showed that day to try and get the results so I suppose our our biggest um problem in the first half of the first game was the scores the goals they got and that was really only the main change that we made up for the final that we put Eva Burke back to sweep and just to try and hold that for the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes as we thought but as it turned out, it worked perfectly for us and she actually stayed there for the whole after the game and, you know, she did a super job there just helping helping out in the full back line and the half back line and yet feeding ball forward, you know, but that was that was the only main difference that we had between the two games. Yeah, well, it was a key difference and fair play to you. Um, I think you really got your homework uh, right the second day out. Um, but th- how did the girls, like... Uh, themselves going into the to the replay were they confident were they did they feel they didn't um do themselves justice maybe in the first quarter of the first match and you know were they confident or yeah they were a little bit shell-shocked or maybe a little bit overcome by nerves and a bit of maybe a sense of the occasion like that's the first time we'd ever contested a junior AL Ireland and maybe that got to them a sense of that or what it was. And Loretto are an absolute powerhouse in terms of schools camogie at, you know, junior A and at senior A level and would have a lot of experience in terms of, you know, playing at that level in finals because for the last number of years, they are, you know, the winners in senior A and in junior A. And like, they have a huge tradition in their school, but I suppose the, the, the draw for us, it really gave the girls, you know, that little bit more sense of you know believe in yourself and you know this is possible we're after turning this around so I suppose we had nothing to lose either you know we had won our monster final and you know we had that so this was just going to be the icing on the cake if we could get across the line and we had no we had no reservation so you know they just went for it and thankfully it worked out for them and they got the result. Very good it's a good way of putting it yeah I, I think um, the commentator um said uh, uh, at the replay, I think he said Loretto had won something like eight of the last 
10 or 11 yeah. uh, titles or something like that, or 8 out of 12 or something like that. So they really have dominated, uh, like as, as long as I remember, Kilkenny schools have been very strong in Leinster and um, and in All-Ireland. And I think that's why this uh, win by both third of schools is so important, Like because I think it's extra important that we beat two Kilkenny schools, because would you feel caught that um, school camogie, you know, uh, reflects into you know county like so if a school tip schools are doing well at under at junior and senior camogie it'll, it'll, it'll show at county under 16 county minor teams yeah I think there's a big correlation between the two Geraldine um, I suppose it's just having girls play um, at such a high standard uh, consistently throughout the year it has to stand to the different panels when they go and link up then um, playing on county panels like similar to the Ursuline I, I don't know your numbers but I'm sure you have a good few involved six under 16s and the minors I think we've seven or eight in total involved between the two panels and and you can see I know the, the minors that were unlucky the weekend to lose out to Cork by a point but the 16s had a great win you know and and even just even the camaraderie between playing with each other at school's level and also then getting to know girls and bringing that through to the county stage and, and becoming familiar with, with how they play and, and different styles and that um, it, it's definitely um, a positive in, in terms of um, if, if you were involved with a county under 16 or minor team to see two thorough teams uh, get the better of two Kilkenny teams it, it is a massive psychological boost, if nothing else, you know. So I think you can see with the numbers of girls that are that are um, coming through on different county panels that have been involved with, with the two schools. You, you can see that it has benefited them, I suppose, training through the winter with competitive games and um, and getting more training in when, when maybe other um, county girls aren't. Yeah, exactly. And Olivia, you, I suppose, uh, teaching in Ursula now for a good while, involved in uh, teams there for down through the years, uh, coaching there. Would you notice, how would you rate uh, the standard of Camogie schools, Camogie at the moment, or does it, does it chop and change with groups of players, or do you think it's a higher level now, maybe when you first started teaching? Well, I suppose, like, you know, there's always going to be a group of kind of girls who come, like we've, we've been fortunate that we've had you know, you'll always have one very talented player, but sometimes it takes that group to come to to really lift it. And I suppose down through the years, we've been fortunate enough to, to see that happen. You know, you get a five and six and maybe seven girls of a very high standard that end up on county teams, county under 16, county minors, and, you know, have gone on then to represent the county at, at senior level or intermediate level. And like when those kind of bunches of girls come together, that's when you see the difference in the in the you know the standard it, it really does bring things along um you know i suppose in in 2013 or 2014 that was when we had our our major lift when we had seven or eight and nine girls a lot of them now playing with the tip seniors you know came together uh, as uh, school students and had great success and brought really come over to a different level in our school anyway but you know you see that down through the years when you know you have special players coming and when you have groups of them coming it's it's all the better because it, it lifts the thing completely and how do you i know you involved a lot in your own club uh Kildang in there and yeah. um how would you compare you know being involved with school teams and club teams um obviously girls are used to playing against each other maybe with the clubs and then they're together with the school and i suppose they have a different friendship and a bond from being in class together and do you know or yeah, sure. I suppose it's completely different because from the club scene, you grow up with these girls, you go to primary school with these girls and, you know, maybe in secondary school with these girls. But when the when the school's teams come together, suddenly now you're playing with girls who you've always played against. And I suppose we've been fortunate enough. We've, you know, I suppose we've kill, tip schools or tip clubs represented. We have Kilkenny schools, Kilkenny clubs represented. We've even leech girls and we have Offaly girls coming in through the school as well so it brings a huge um different element to the to the blend that happens in the camogie team when you're suddenly playing with all these girls who maybe have competed against in your club and with your club and maybe with your county as well so it's a it's a completely different and a the best of you know all the clubs around at that at that particular age and it, it just gives a, a completely different take on things and you know it's definitely a, a, a very special blend in a very special um, bond between girls who normally play against each other and suddenly as I said they're suddenly now playing with each other. Very good 
And Carl, just back to your final again. Um, obviously you, you ran out winners three seven to one four, but you were behind the half. Um, you were behind the half time one two to three, but then uh, you had to win then in the second half, and like you got an early goal. I think it was uh, from Lucy Callum. Does that kind of change the the game? I suppose, and you got on top then. Yeah, it was. I, I suppose. Like you said, um, setting out, we probably would have preferred to start with the win to try and get kind of settle the nerves because we found in the in the Munster final against um Kalosh de Fura in Ennis that we were very nervy and we felt that um it took the girls a long time to kind of get into the game. So get, getting a good start was was important to us. But I I, I actually think Lucy Hanlon had a had a massive final. I think she got maybe one three from play. She was outstanding on the day. Uh, her goal after half time was massive. It really kind of gave us the belief because even going in at half time two points down was um, a success, really, considering the wind was so strong. Psychologically, you're thinking we're still losing, you know. So it's it, it's a kind of a dangerous place to be at at half time. But um, I think Kate, Kate Ralph's two points just before half time were important as well. They kind of gave us a bit of a lift. Um, two points from play, two great scores, and and we kind of went in with a little bit of momentum. Um, and we, we definitely got the upper hand, I suppose, with an early goal in the second half. You're always kind of going to kick on with the wind, and, and thankfully we did. Very good. And would the most that team be overage next year? Yeah, there's there's um there's a good there's a good lot of them, I suppose, um on, on the older side. But we would have handled a 42, you know, and there's a lot of girls there in second year who um I suppose would have been unlucky maybe to miss out on, on starting positions, but but hopefully now they'll have learned this year the standards that, that are set by the girls in, in third year and, and transition year and and hopefully they'll continue on that bit of tradition next year. You know, they've kind of cut their teeth now at um at the at the level. So um yeah, next year we'll be missing a good few players, I suppose, from that age, but but we definitely have the conveyor belt coming through because we had such a big panel this year, which um which was definitely an advantage to it. And in schools now, is it just the junior? You have a junior and a senior team, and maybe a first year blitz or something. Is it for another team? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Olivia um, is is organising first and second year blitzes, which is fantastic because um, there's no official competition for them, and I suppose it would depend on the year. But at the minute, we we have a good lot of um, girls in first and second year that are hugely interested in camogie, and it would be a shame. Um, if they didn't have have a couple of days out during the year because they're training away, but um, but yeah, it's just junior and and senior will say in terms of official competitions. But like I said, Olivia there is organising first and second year blitzes within within Tipperary, which is fantastic, and 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 the girls are really enjoying it. Very good. Um, I suppose uh, Olivia, back to back to your final then. Um, I think I think we're all stunned by the amount of injury time that was played, and uh, obviously uh, Rachel Downing got a, a late goal from a free. Um, I think it was the fourth minute of injury time and, you know, everyone was just shouting at the ref to blow it up, but he, he wasn't in any rush as, as, as such. Were you afraid maybe the tides were going to turn and that they were going to have a dramatic comeback? Because I suppose you did kind of control the match and, you know, I, you did look on top for most of that second half and obviously that late goal probably made it a closer looking match than it was. But, you know, with all injury time that was played, it could have been, uh, could have been very nervy there at the end. Yeah, like there was six and a half minutes played, injury time. And like, I mean, we didn't have any injuries as such. We had one, Sarah Corkin went down with cramp, but like she was up within a minute. Um, so at the end of it, he said to me, you know, I played six and a half minutes. He said there was, I don't know, multiple substitutions. And he said there was some injuries, but like nobody that was there considered there was anything like that amount of time that was necessary. Mm. But like Rachel Dowling's goal was similar to what she got, you know, so, some of the scores she got in the first day. I mean, she's a very strong player, um, you know, super athlete, super camogie player. And I suppose the goal she scored was was just reflective of this, the goals they got maybe in the first game, in the, um, the, the first match. But like, you know, I suppose t if time had to go much further, there was another chance for her that, you know, she was going to get it or even Cueva Care Marta that could have got it. And, you know, we were, could have been facing a level game and going to a situation that Loretta Kilkenny had found themselves in the senior A semi-final that, you know, the match was a draw and it went to extra time and that was a draw and that they played 45s and it, it was sorted on sudden death, like, which was, oh you know, desperate way for anybody to lose an Ireland semi-final in their case in the senior A. And 
I don't think anyone would have considered that that was the way to start our game if it had to go to that, you know, if if, if they had to get another score. But yeah, certainly we were we were living on the edge there until that final whistle went, yeah. And um, like I was asking Cot there, would you have any players now over age for next year? How will you fix for next year? Yeah, we have we have a, a I suppose one fifth year on the panel, and we had an, a lot of transition years. So again, that makes a huge difference. Like this is under sixteen and a half, and when you have girls, you know, right up to the age, that makes an awful difference in terms of the strength of the team, like the physicality of the girls. If you're 15 and you're competing a girl against a girl who's 16 and a half, that makes an awful difference at that level, you know, when they're playing the the, the top of the top, you know, in terms of uh, at their standard. So, you know, we we'll, we'll lose uh, uh, probably, you know, eight or nine of those girls again going on. But like, you know, as Coit said, our panel was large as well. And I suppose that was uh, predominantly due to as well the COVID situation that we had all through last year where, you know, most of our third years, well, all of our third years never actually got to wear the school jersey at all. You know, this year was the first year they put it on because we had no competition at the end of 2020 and for first years. And then we had no competition at all uh, last year. So I suppose, you know, like Cod said, we do have, you know, thankfully first years coming through and second years coming through. And I suppose the second years are really at a disadvantage because second years are trying to compete with girls who are two and a half years older than them for you know, places on, on these teams and, you know, unless you're an outstanding second year, there's probably, you know, not not really too much room for you competing at a girl who's two years nearly your senior. So, you know, it's definitely, I think, something we should look at in tip schools, Camogie is, you know, even a kind of an under 15 competition where those first years and second years would get a chance to play in a, you know, a proper competition, proper matches rather than just blitzes. And, Again, that would allow us to see the talent coming through for, you know, the junior A of the following year or the following two years. And it would it would give us, you know, a kind of a, a feeding into the, the next round of the championship, because this was, you know, we're not always going to be winning finals or, you know, contesting all Ireland finals. So all you want is for your girls to continue to play the sport and play it as the best level we can. So if we can encourage those younger girls to to bite into that and to buy into that, well then, you know, they will be the next junior A team and they'll go on to hopefully play senior then for the, the school as well. Brilliant. Well said. Um yeah. look, it's fantastic the success you had. I know um Cashel Community School obviously got to a senior A final this year as well. We're unfortunate in the final um uh clash the Pub Ross Grey as well competed in the final and unfortunately we're beaten and uh, both of them won Munster titles and there's other Tipperary schools competing at intermediate and in Shield finals and I think it's been a great year for uh, Tipperary schools Camogie and I suppose the highlight obviously was last week uh, Thursday and Friday to have two teams win two all Irelands in two days um, was really special and just to congratulate both, uh, both of you again and to all the players and um, I know is there other people on the management maybe that you want to mention caught there you know Keane is involved with you isn't it? Yeah, and Ray Ralph there for my Kharki as well. Um, so we'd, we'd big my Kharki contingent, and, and Ray was, it was brilliant on match days. He was a hand out in the line, so he has put in phenomenal work with, with them girls at club level. So, um, so it was great to have him as well. Yeah, and Olivia, likewise, you have helped too, I presume. Yeah, so David Ohini is a um, helping me this year. Uh, he's a substitute teacher there that we have at the minute. So he's done great work and been, you know, hugely encouraging of the girls and hugely encouraging of the participation of the sport. And um, equally then, I suppose we've had some, you know, outstanding parents who have come on board and on match days as well to just give us to su the support and the line. So for most of the matches, uh, Michael Ferncombe has been there and Paddy Burke and uh, John Corcoran as well so all of those men have daughters playing and I suppose it's easy for them to to come and support but you know their their help is invaluable too and it's 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 lovely to get that support from the parents and and all of our parents have been hugely supportive you know it's lovely when you drive down to Bandon in the middle of October and it's pouring rain to see two or three of the parents have driven down to kind of support you and are there for you and there for the girls so you know the parents have been huge in, in terms of their support of, of the team through the whole kind of year. So thank them for that as well. Brilliant. Fair play to everyone. Well, thanks again, uh, Kosh and Olivia, for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast uh, to chat about the great success um, that both presentation and Ursline had, obviously, in the All-Iron Final. 
Um, Kaj, I might just mention there, um, I won't let you get away, just obviously you were beaten last week uh, in the final group game of Division 1 League um, against Galway. Lots of talk, I suppose, of being robbed and hard done by and how, a few days later now, what, how would you feel reflecting back on it or were you, were you robbed, were you hard done by or do you know, were you beaten by a better team? Yeah, I think um, initially, I suppose you're kind of annoyed and angry with the with the fashion, with the way I suppose that we that we lost it, um, a late free, um, and I suppose the sending off as well that was during the match. So your initial reaction would be kind of angry and annoyance. But I think when you have time to reflect on it and watch the match back a couple of times, like we had, we performed quite well, which is satisfying. But um, we had chances um, during the game, I suppose to. To, uh, to put us ahead during that crucial time uh, in the last five minutes that we shouldn't have been relying on on, the, on our ref's decision to, to determine the game like and we just didn't take them. So I think we have to take responsibility for that ourselves um, and make sure that it doesn't happen again if, if, if we encounter Galway or whoever we encounter in the Munster Championship or, or the All-Ireland Series that we have to, we have to learn how to, um, how to deal with them um, with them obstacles and challenges when they come but I think overall it, it was a good team performance and, and look at any time you're in the mix with all our rain on Ireland champions going down the home stretch um, going in well into injury time like that I think it was seven or eight minutes of injury time played um, you know that you're doing that you're doing a lot right you know so we've um, we've a good bit of work done but more to do and and look as I said um, credit to Galway, they, they found a way to win and, and they did and, and with respect to the drawing board now preparing, I think it's three, four weeks time for Munster Championship. And does the Munster Championship, I suppose, take um, on a bigger kind of significance now, like because I suppose you came so close uh, in the league this year and last year, um, you know, the chance for silverware now in the Munster Championship, is that kind of more important now than ever before heading into the All Ireland Championship? Yeah, I I think um I think at the start of this year we set out for any any competition that we were that we were in we were going to try and win it and do the best that we could and that was the league and that'll be the Munster and that'll be the All Ireland series as well. Do you know what? I, I don't think we're taking any competition for granted and we're definitely not dismissing any competition. So yeah, without a doubt, um, Munster Championship is something that that our focus is. Um, is keenly set on and um, and preparation for the next couple of weeks will be on Limerick in, in that first round. And, and I think it's something not many on the team have silverware in a Tipperary jersey. So any time to represent Tipperary and you get a chance to chase down a bit of silverware is, is a fantastic um, opportunity to get and, and, and one that you can't take lightly. So we'll definitely be putting um, massive effort and focus on, on that first round against Limerick. Very good. Thanks very much, Carl. We look forward to following you for Thanks, the rest sir. of the year. Uh, thank you, Olivia, too. Thanks, Charlene. After the success of the two schools, uh, all Ireland finals on Thursday and Friday, it was mixed fortunes then for the rest of the weekend. Uh, on Saturday, our under 16 A team won their first round of the Munster Championship, had a great win there, winning 3 10 to 4 points. Um, at the same time, our seniors were playing up in Ballon Slow in their final group game of the league. They'd already beaten Offaly down in Dublin, and a win over Galway would have put them through to a league final against Cork. Unfortunately, as mentioned there, talking to caught there earlier, they were beaten by a or if uh, they were beaten by a single point to finish uh, 13 points to 111. Galway with a controversial free at the end to win the game. And obviously Tipperary were also reduced to 14 players with the sending off Casey Hennessy early in the first half. But they played um brilliantly and gave a great performance. And uh, we looked to be heading for a draw, but a late free um by Galway was very well put over by Rebecca Henley. So disappointment, a heartbreak there for the for the seniors. Um, it would have been great to get through to a league final. Um, the following day, then on Sunday, our minors went in, were in an all Ireland semi-final. And unfortunately for them, also beaten by a pint. Um, more heartbreak again. Um, again, played very well and dominated the game for large portions of the game. Just couldn't get enough scores on the scoreboard, really, when, when, especially in the first half when they had the advantage of the wind. And um, a late point by Aoife Healy, the Cork centre-back, came up. So it run up through the middle of the field and a uh, great strike into the wind to point it there. In the, I think it was around the 60th minute to win the game for them. And Tiberia chances after that, but 
just couldn't get the vital scores that they needed and um, were beaten on a final score line of Cork 1-7, Tipperary 9 points. After the game, I spoke to um, selector Aoife Malachny and got her thoughts on the match. I'm joined now by Aoife Malachny, selector on the Tipperary minor team. Aoife, obviously, must be very disappointed to lose by one point. Oh, look, yeah, I'm first disappointed with that. You know, like, I'd be more disappointed for the girls. Like, the, if you had anyone seen that game, like, the effort they put in, the work rate, it was absolutely phenomenal out there. Like, and they just they just came up in the wrong side of that result. Like, they were just so unfortunate. Their ball there at the end could have gone over the bar as well, could easily have gone to extra time. Like, it was just really, really unlucky. Yeah, it was extra time written all over it, really. A really close contest. You led by a point at half time, but probably felt you left some scores behind. Yeah, look, what, probably seven or eight wides there in the first half, you know, and I suppose with that win, you had to be kind of trying to take everything, especially against Cork. You can't leave anything behind against them because you're leaving them in a game that you don't want to leave them in. But look, you can't fault the girls either. Like, they were still doing the right thing. You know, we were making the scoring chances. They were getting into the scoring positions. It was just that final ball just wasn't sticking for us today. Like, and look, we, we can't fault the girls for that. Like, but it is disappointing when we probably left maybe six or seven points behind us in the first half. Second half, though, you still enjoyed a lot of the position, even though Cork had the wind. Uh, the work rate was brilliant, but I suppose credit to the Cork centre back came up there on the 60th minute and scored a wonder point to win it. Yeah, look, she's an outrageous score there that she got near at the end. Like, you know, it's, it's just like we could have we could have taken them like you know and I think that's where the girls are going to be kind of most disappointed with them like you know sometimes you get bet by six or seven points and you know you're not good enough that's easier to take but there in the second half like you know we had a shot we got blocked down there last two balls you know anything could have happened for us like but in fairness to the Cork girls like they kept at us and at us and they got the reward then in the end they took that long range point and look she she split the post with it like so you have to give credit to them as well because they stayed in the game and they they, they, I can't even say they earned the result because that would be hard on our girls but like you know it was just fair play to them I suppose yeah and but look a positive you know, it was a very hmm. good campaign um, you had some great wins I suppose you're only really fractions away from getting to an all iron final but uh and a lot of girls, you know, I think there's a lot of girls that go on and wear the blue and gold for Tipperary again. Oh, definitely. Like, you know, the, the girls this campaign, like, have been absolutely brilliant. Like, they're, they've been nothing short of unbelievable. Like, anything we've asked them to do, whether it's been training, coming to matches, challenge matches, like, every little thing that you've asked of them, they've done it. They, some of them there are going to have serious inter-county careers ahead of them. Like, you know, they'll be really pushing, like, Bill and Ray and them now. Those lads are going to be looking for these girls in the next few weeks, and I've no doubt they'll step up to it. But, like, you know, they've had a phenomenal campaign. Like, they're after having three really good wins, you know, and, like, today, like, they did they did nothing wrong today. Like, we couldn't turn around here today and nobody can walk off the field and be disappointed with themselves in their own performances because everybody gave everything they had. Like, you know, there's nothing more they could have done today. But look, there's some girls there that are going to have a huge future ahead of them, whether it be club, whether it be county. They, they've got it, like, you know. Brilliant. Aoife, thanks very much and hard luck. Thanks. And that is it for this week's uh, The Camogie Report podcast. Uh, again, thanks for everyone for listening and we hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel and you're missing out, make sure and subscribe to it and don't forget to uh, like and uh, share this podcast as well. Mm-hmm.